11, 63. The Hulu adaptation. I've made it very well known on my channel that 11 63 is maybe my favorite Stephen King book of all time. Not a totally popular opinion among his fans, especially the bigger fans of his older work, but I just vibed with it 100%. And I get it's a strange pick for Stephen King because it's not even necessarily a horror, it's more of a sci-fi thriller. I just, I, I think it's a great book. There's like two flaws to it, and that's the main character's a bit bland, and it doesn't address some of the social issues going on during the 60s. But getting into the premise of the book slash show, what we have here is a man whose life isn't the best, and a friend of his has found a portal through time that will bring him back to 1960. They decide, well, we could change the course of events. How could you improve the world if you have to take another shot from 1960? Well, why not save JFK? Let's stop his assassination. And so you have a story where they're trying to figure out if the conspiracy theories around the JFK assassination have any validity to them. They don't just want to walk up to Lee Harvey Oswald and pop him if it's a grander conspiracy and the CIA is involved, because that just means someone else will do it. And it's, it's engaging. This is a good story. And it has the Stephen King level of effort behind it. You can tell Stephen King really looked into these conspiracy theories and tried to figure out what's the most likely uh, sequence of events to have actually happened and dives into it within this tale. And if you haven't read the book, I recommend you do so before watching the show because the show is good. This is a positive review. There's just some changes they've made that are definitely changes that don't improve the story necessarily, but were necessary to make it a successful show. But we're not here to talk about the book. Let's talk about the Hulu adaptation of this Stephen King tale. First off, I want to just say I have a general disliking of James Franco's acting. I get there are fans of his. That's fine with me. He definitely has a certain kind of charisma. He just grates on me like sandpaper. So that was kind of my biggest issue up front. I'm not a James Franco fan. He's fine in some of the comedies he's been in, but every time he tries to take on a serious role, to me, it just feels like he thinks he's doing better than he is. I know that's not like a real criticism. It's just like a feeling I can't shake. No disrespect to James Franco if you somehow watch this, but I just cannot vibe with him. I know people who are like that way with a lot of actors. But to be fair, casting the main character is difficult because as I said, it's one of the few flaws of the book that this main character, Jake, is kind of bland. He's just not the most personality-filled character of all time. When I read the book, I imagined Chris Pine the whole time, so it is a bit jarring to go from that to James Franco, and that probably tainted it even more so but I, I, you know, it's not that big a deal and James Franco does a fine job. And the rest of the cast does a stupendous job from Sadie to Al, Bill, everyone killed it. I have a really big love for Chris Cooper, the actor who plays Al here, and he's been a part of my life like since my early childhood. And watching him is always a good time. It's one of these characters who's never really been like the lead starring role of a movie, but he's been such an incredible supporting presence in so many of my favorite movies that every time he comes on screen now, I'm just, mm, yeah, great. Love that guy. And Sarah, the actress who played Sadie, spectacular. She embodied that 1950s innocence that Sadie is supposed to perfectly, while also bringing a lot of personality and strength to the role as well. So a lot of credit to the cast. And oh, I also want to say for the actor, Bill, he kind of had this chaotic energy about him throughout that really lent to the narrative. They did make some changes though. And let's talk about those because I think beat for beat pacing everything within 11, 63 is rather perfect for what it needs to be for that story. So what about these drastic changes? Well, for fans of the book, they take Bill's role and I won't spoil how, but they increase it substantially. He's no longer just a major character in a side plot. He is a major character. And there are beats with him I do not like, especially in the latter half of the show, the way his character is handled slash resolved bugged me. It didn't feel as smooth. And there's the justification for a lot of things in this show that the past is pushing back. And while in general, I feel like that was utilized well, for the ways I think they were trying to hint it was affecting Bill's character, it felt a little too much for me. But aside from that, 
I liked nearly every single change they made because I understand you need to have a character who's following Jake more along for a visual adaptation because we can't have this constant internal monologue. So it makes more sense that Jake has a more substantial companion. That's all I'll say to forgive spoilers. There's also a very heavy central romance to this story between Sadie and Jake and this he has to keep a secret that he's a time traveler for her element. And in the book, the way that develops, I found to be incredibly smooth. It's one of the best evolutions of that kind of secrets hidden in love uh, I've read. I think Stephen King killed it. And in the show, I think it holds up. I don't think it's necessarily as smooth, as good, but it works for me. I have some slight nitpicks, not with the set design or the visuals in that way. They did a really, really good job of bringing back to life 1950, but there are definitely some green screen shots later on and a couple of VFX that aren't spectacular. Oh my God, how did I forget to mention this? Also, the actor playing Lee Harvey Oswald, he is now Lee Harvey Oswald to me. He just turned Lee Harvey Oswald into this man-child, whiny, awful person. And I think that was exactly the choices that needed to be made. Don't glorify that POS at all. And he did that. I loved it. Great representation of Lee Harvey Oswald. Overall though, I just was pleasantly surprised. I got over James Franco at a certain point and the supporting cast around him was so rock solid that I did lose myself in this time travel story. It was reasonably as paced well as the book was. The changes they made unarguably saved them time and budget in excusable uh, necessary ways for the show and the uh, cranking up and toning down of various characters all worked. And one of the tricky parts of 112263 in the book itself was, in my opinion, probably weaving all these different plot lines together. And I was curious to see how these different subplots that are kind of waiting, because we are in a time where you need to wait for the assassination of JFK to happen, how well they would play out or if it would feel like a bunch of filler episodes. Never the case, they all kind of move along simultaneously and they actually build up the tension between each other extremely well. So I think they did that as well as could be expected. On IMDb, this show currently has a little bit over an eight out of 10, which is really good. I don't know if I would necessarily put it quite that high, but I'm not mad that it's actually ranked that well. I, I would say it's more in the 7.5 out of 10 range, but I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna disagree with people who have it as high as an eight or even maybe an 8.5, especially if you're a fan of some of the things that I've detracted from here. But let's go ahead and get into spoilers. If you haven't read 11.22.63, I'm gonna have a purchase link down below it's one of my favorite Stephen King books. I think it has remarkably few flaws, as well as one of the best Stephen King endings ever, which note before we get into spoilers, they land here. They absolutely land this ending in the show, and it's because they did such a good job uh, letting the performances come to the forefront throughout the whole season of television. And because of that, without getting into spoilers, the ending lands. And they also really take their time with it, which it felt really good. Uh, moving on from there though, we're gonna go ahead and get into spoilers. So if you haven't read the book, at least I would go ahead and click off the video. But if you have read the book, there's not really a whole lot of spoilers you aren't aware of for the show. So you're probably fine. But let's go ahead and talk about 112263, the show with spoilers. I guess if you haven't read the book and watched the show, the inverse of that, you're also in the clear. So Bill's cranking up where he leaves his home in Kentucky because he believably doesn't have a lot there and joins Jake on his journey and believes Jake is a time traveler. He, he believes him rather quickly, but I guess with the amount of evidence that Jake has that he's from the future, it's understandable. Also, Bill's not the most educated guy, so it, I don't know, he just seems to go along with Jake quite well. Again, a more charismatic performance for Jake, I think would have smoothed that out. It's just that when James Franco is like arguing with him, instead of like feeling like he's this presence that like, oh, he's actually very convincing or, you know, something that a more charismatic actor could bring. It, it, James Franco just comes across as like the bro you know from college arguing about who broke the bong. Like that's just, I don't, again, I don't mean to be too harsh. It's just always the vibe I get from him. And that's not because of Pineapple Express because he's certainly not giving that kind of performance. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I just don't love the way he carries himself and how he presents. He never goes to an extreme I like. He always feels reserved, like he's not willing to go to this extreme 
because it might look bad for him. I don't know. I'm going to get off that issue here. But throughout the show, having Bill alongside Jake on this mission actually ended up working for me. When he's first getting involved, it was a bit clunky. And the way they resolve him at the end, where he is checked into a mental institution and then just kills himself by throwing himself out of a window, that was clunky as well. But the real meat of him existing, yeah, I liked it. I get you can justify him falling in love with Lee Harvey Oswald's wife, I forget her name, sorry, uh, through the past manipulating him. It just was a bit much, and the fact that he was then all of a sudden like, oh, also Lee Harvey Oswald and I are best friends. That when did that happen? Because the only interactions we saw between him and Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald did not seem to be liking him pretty much at all. So I I'm confused by that. He's just suddenly at his party and they're chummy buddies. Okay. You, yeah, they, he was left alone for a long time, so that could have happened. Uh, I also want to give the actress, again, who played Sadie, so much credit. She really was spectacular, and I'm going to be looking for her in more things, as well as Chris Cooper for Al. Al is kind of cranked up here a little bit as well, because he's kind of providing this narrative explanations with flashbacks with the night he was explaining everything to Jake continually throughout the show. And Chris... God, I just love that guy as an actor. He's, he gives off such a good, crotchety old man <laughs> performance. New story about a girl in Lisbon who got shot and crippled in a random hunting accident. And I thought, hell, you know, no harm. Let me try to keep this from happening. I actually would love to meet and interview him because of just how much he has been uh, prominent in my life for so many roles I've, I've enjoyed. But yeah, he, he, he did a stupendous job and I like, at first it kind of felt lazy to have Al continually showing up, but it was, it was smooth enough uh, and it, it just worked. The worst thing about those scenes was a distracting goatee, but you know, you just have to have those goatees to be like, oh, this is happening back then for people who are not smart enough to realize this is happening back then, haircut. Look, pay attention. Haircut means this is before. And yeah, that, so all, all of that worked. Sadie and her husband. So this is a this was probably going into it one of the plot lines I was most nervous about when it's like, okay, that one in the book was not, it was, gr it was still good, but it, it had like the most jarring kind of flipping in and out of what's going on in the main like 112263 assassination. I think it might've even been slightly smoother in the show. I need to reread the book before I make that definitively, but that was so well tied into the narrative of the show where it like, it, it didn't feel forced ever. And it was paced alongside events of the show so well. And I remember in the book when a couple things happened, I was like, oh, that feels a little like convenient or whatever, but not here. They happen in the same ways. I'm just talking about the, the how the pacing of the two different mediums line up. I think the pacing of the show lent itself to those plots being along with each other better. So that was a nice surprise. I also just, you know, having Jake live in the time he did all of it was well realized and believable. They crank up some of the social issues and address them a bit more in the show. And that's one of the few criticisms I see this book frequently get is that Jake goes back in time to the 1960s and then he just doesn't address the racial divide that's there. Even though he's not a racist, it should be bothering him. He should be noticing it. He just doesn't. They have moments in this show where Jake is definitely bothered. Offers a black woman a cup of coffee that, oh wait, he shouldn't be doing that. She's not allowed to drink from the same sources as white people. You know, there's stuff like that where it's like, okay, at least they're acknowledging its existence in the show. And I actually was afraid they would try to have this like, oh, he tries to like kumbaya everybody into not being a racist, which would have just been unbelievable. Like it would have felt condescending in my opinion to have that in the show. And cause, cause those issues are way deeper than just having one person from the future come back and be like, stop being racist. So the fact they didn't do that, I actually appreciated. They acknowledge it. It's there, it's ugly, it's gross, but he's not gonna be able to just flip a switch and fix these problems. And he has to worry about the assassination of JFK, so he can't be starting fights right and left. So yeah, I feel like that was walking the appropriate line. My overall thought here at the end of it is just, yeah, I actually really recommend 112263. It's about as creepy as the book. It has um, a decent everything, except for the main performance drove me crazy, but I got over it and I think most people won't even even struggle with it as much as I did. So yeah, let me know what you think of the show 112263 in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the book if you've read it, but you haven't watched the show and same for the show when you haven't read the book. And if you've read both, let me know what you think of my, uh, you know, thoughts here on how they brought it to life because it was a more true to the story than I expected going into it. Uh, the biggest change is Bill and 
yeah, I ended up liking a lot of the purpose he served. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my two latest high tier Patreons, Nicole Feast and Zelaine Althane. Hope you guys are having a great day. See you.